All right, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at a Canadian IMP or individual meal pack. This one was sent to me by Tracy Phillips, and it's actually going to be a pretty special one for me because this one is mini number 12, pulled pork, and it's from 2019. This is the first time I've ever had an IMP, or for that matter, any ration from the same year as produced. I don't believe that I've ever even had an MRE in the same year that it was produced. I've uh, gotten pretty close. I think I've had one from the previous year. But as far as IMPs and any other international rations, the most recent one I've ever had was last year in 2018 when I did one from 2016. So that one was already two years old, and I consider that pretty fresh and was pretty excited to get my hands on it. So thanks to Tracy, I'm actually going to get to check out a 2019 IMP in 2019. You can see we have the standard IMP bag. Not really much on here. On the back it says to like them on Facebook. I've actually never done that. I need to check that out. A little uh, QR code here. And on the front it does say military ration, not for resale. And we have everything in English and French. And let's go ahead and take a look and see what's inside of this one. And I should also mention that I'm excited not only about the fact that this is from 2019, but because of the fact that the most recent one I have had before this was 2016. And I know that there's been a few changes, most of them kind of minor, but still there's been some changes made. And it's going to be pretty exciting to take a look at those. Because of how interesting I find this, this is probably going to be a pretty long video. So there will be a short version. The link to that will be down below. If you do want to skip all the fun and interesting stuff and just see the straight up review. And we can see here we have it uh, all packed nicely. The two boxes giving it that box-like square appearance. And we have our entree. Pulled pork. I'm definitely looking forward to checking this one out. Here's the ingredients if you want to take a look at those. And also the nutrition facts. And this actually has a sort of a tricky little number on the on the side here. It has number 8745. And somebody could uh, misidentify that as a date code and say it's from 2018. But of course, there aren't 745 days in 2018. So we find the actual date code over here, 18212. So although this is a 2019 menu, this was actually packed on the 212th day of 2018. And the box is the dessert. Well, they actually call it a dessert, but I uh, generally kind of think of it as uh, sort of more of a... Actually, I guess this one is kind of like a dessert. A lot of times it tends to be sliced fruit in like a syrup, but this is date square. That's the first thing I have. Well, actually, this too, I've never had the pulled pork, and I've never had a date square. So that's going to be interesting to see. 18 to 21. And then we have all the other stuff. Let's just pull everything out. Oh, all right, I was not expecting this. This is uh, first I've seen of this, I was expecting the hamburger bun. Instead we have tortillas. Tortillas de farine. I believe that's gonna be flour tortillas. 18331, right at the end of 2018. So that's something different. Uh, I've looked at three things so far and all three of them have been something different for me. Uh, for a beverage here, we have Nescafe Sweet and Creamy, which will be, I believe, a three-in-one. It's actually a lot of air in this, it's kind of strange. And our other beverage will be two lemon lime sports drinks. We'll mix one up for the review and save one for later. But each of these is added to 250 milliliters of water. And we have some nice fresh M&M's milk chocolate. Best before December 2019. It's pretty rare that you get a commercially packaged snack in an MRE or an IMP that's actually within date. That's pretty cool to see. Let's go. We have a couple more things to put on the tortillas if we don't want to use them for the pulled pork. We have, I didn't think I had it in English, we have raspberry jam and peanut butter. And we have Tabasco. It's a nice little uh, touch, like the old days with the US MREs with the little Tabasco bottles. And we have Tic Tacs instead of gum. Matches. In the beverage bag. The excessively large IMP napkin, which I kind of said that as a joke, but it's uh, this is to me one of the best things in here because uh, unlike uh, the toilet paper in the US MREs, you're actually getting something pretty substantial here. 
And this can be used as a napkin, obviously. It makes a perfectly good napkin. It can also be a makeshift table setting. If you're, say, you're eating on a rock that's pretty dirty or something, you can put this down, spread it out. Obviously, it can be used as toilet paper. It can be used as kindling for a fire. And it can also be used to uh, clean up before or after your meal. I suppose in that way it's not quite as handy as a moist towelette, but that's okay. You also have another new item, which I've seen in a few reviews, but uh, I haven't had one myself, the compressed napkin. So in addition to the napkin, you also get another napkin, but this is kind of a fun one. There's the little Canadian leaf on it, and this one you uh, put a little bit of water in here, and it basically reconstitutes. I'm looking forward to trying one of those out for the first time. And another new addition, the Canadian spoon now looks like a lot more like the U.S. spoon. It used to be that long white one. Now it's brown, and in addition to being it's a little bit longer than the U.S. one, but in addition to being brown, it's also more than a spoon. It's actually a spork. First time I've seen this, too. All right, here's everything from this 2019 pulled pork IMP all laid out. It certainly looks like it's going to be a good meal. I'm looking forward to trying it out. And I will say it does kind of seem like there's a little bit less in here than what I'm used to seeing in most IMPs. I'm not sure what's missing, but it just seems like I usually get more in an IMP than you get in an MRE. And this kind of looks like about the same amount of stuff that you expect to see in an MRE. So no complaints or anything, just a little comment on it. And I do want to mention, I know that I said this was sent to me by Tracy Phillips, and I should mention that he has very recently put up his own review of a pulled pork IMP. The one he did was from 2018, so I'm going to put a link to his review down below too. And if you want, you can check out the differences between a 2018 and a 2019. It's nothing really radical, but there's definitely some changes. And speaking of changes, this one does have a lot of very interesting stuff to me personally. As I said, I've never done a pulled pork IMP before, so the entree is totally new to me. I've also never had the date square. I've never even seen the tortillas in an IMP, so that's something new to me. Most of the other stuff is pretty standard, but it does give me my first chance to see an IMP spork and also the compressed napkin. So since the IMPs do not come with flameless ration heaters, I believe that they're generally supplied separately. I'm going to take our pulled pork and we're going to just heat that up in some boiling water, make sure it's really nice and hot. Oh, and this is actually a little different too. I was expecting to see the uh, standard silver Baxter's packaging, but I'm glad I opened that up because this actually looks a little bit different. And there's the Baxter's. I was about to say it doesn't even say who manufactured it, but right down at the bottom we have Baxter's. So I guess this is a new look. Let's so get used to that. Yeah, might as well take a look at the date square packaging and see if that's the same thing. Yep. This does have heating instructions. Uh, I'm not exactly sure if the date square should be heated or not, or if it's better heated or not, but I'm just going to have this one cold. And if I get a chance to, to do another one at some point, I'll heat that one up. Let's go ahead and check everything out. All right, why don't we start off by adding a little bit of color with these actual fresh M&Ms. Don't necessarily usually say this about candy bars and chocolate things in commercial packaging, but it actually does smell like fresh chocolate. It kind of feels like a luxury. And we'll take a look at the date square. This package uh, does have air in it. I uh, might be concerned if this was an older one, but the fact that it's from this year, it's actually packaged on the 221st day of 2018, shouldn't be an issue. Our date square. Not sure which side is the top, which side is the bottom. And it does smell good. It smells kind of like a cross between like a, a fruit bar and a sort of like a soft granola bar kind of a thing. The fruit smells a little bit harder to describe. This is not like a standard like an apple or raspberry kind of a fruit bar. It has that date smell, which kind of sort of similar to raisins. And check out the tortillas de farine. First time seeing Canadian tortillas. And these should be pretty similar to the U.S. ones. They are from the Warner Company. You have that standard U.S. MRE problem with the tortillas in that they're folded in half so they instantly split. And they smell good. It basically just smells like a flour and water dough. But they definitely smell fresh, which is a good thing. Let's fold these this way. And I do have a feeling that with the pulled pork, I would like to have the tortilla set aside for that. 
so I can make some little burritos or taco kind of things. But because uh, this is a review and we want to check everything out, I'm going to set one aside for that, and the other one we're going to use for the peanut butter and raspberry jam. And one thing I will mention, since these are very new, this was packaged on the 261st day of 2018, you don't really expect to have any problems with lamination. But one thing I'm wondering if it's maybe a potential issue with Canadian, although this is from Thermopack, Stone Mountain, Georgia, but um, if maybe the uh, retort pouches are a little bit different because I was giving this one a good knead and I wouldn't have expected this, but it actually seems to be a little bit of a problem with delamination already. The only reason I notice it is because it's on the uh, Canadian flag. And I think you can kind of see that, how it looks discolored, but basically it's because the, the plastic uh, initial layer is sort of peeling away from the uh, layer below it. You can kind of see in comparison, this one looks completely black. And this one has that sort of light kind of look to it. Nothing, nothing major, a very minor thing, but probably I think it's something worth mentioning in a review. Let's give this some peanut butter. And some raspberry jam. All right, and the last thing we need to do before we take a look at the entree and try everything out is uh, mix up these beverages. The lemon lime sports drink, as I said, it mixes with 250 mils of water, which is only a little bit over eight, and I guess closer to nine probably ounces. So it's definitely less than the U.S. mixes that make 12 ounces, and I guess that's why they give you the two. So you end up with nearly 18. And we're just going to make this up in the Canadian hot beverage bag, which is nice because. It has the gusseted bottom. Very convenient. We can get this to open without making a mess. It probably does seem to be right up at the top. There we go. No messing around with the artificial colors in that, it just looks white. Water, which brings it basically right up to that that line for the sports drink. So I guess that is a, a realistic line. And we'll give that a good shake. And since it is in this nice bag that'll stand up on its own, I'm just going to leave it right in here rather than using a glass. And now it's time to check out our incredibly hot pulled pork. It seems like the IMPs a lot of times do have air in the pouches. Uh, it doesn't seem to be anything to worry about, but it's something that I think would concern me over the long term if I was storing these for a long time. The, uh, the date square and this both had some air on them. Like I said, it's probably not any kind of an issue if you're eating it relatively quickly, but just something to think about for long term storage. And there's the pulled pork, some steam coming off of it. That smells really good. It smells like it's in a sort of a barbecue sauce, like you would kind of expect from pulled pork. Let's take a look at it. All right, that looks and smells great. But I do have to say that in my excitement to check it out, I did forget to mix up one thing, the Nescafe 3-in-1. It's just say to cut it, but luckily it does have a tear notch. And this is something I can only assume is sort of a polarizing kind of thing for people that like black coffee. You don't have any choice. You're going to get your creamer and your sugar mixed in. People who do like to have cream and sugar, it's very convenient to have it already pre-mixed. All 
All right, now we're ready to try it out. Let's say when I think of pulled pork, I don't want to say less runny, but a little bit, a little bit drier than this. But you know, it does. You do expect it to have like a barbecue sauce that it's sort of simmering and cooking in. That's a nice chunk right there. So overall, it's not nothing really too surprising there. Actually, there's an even better chunk right here. And uh, this is a good sized entree too. You're getting more in these Canadian entrees than you get in the U.S. entree. Wow. So the one thing that does surprise me is that this actually has potatoes in it, which kind of makes it more of an entree, more of a, a full dish rather than just having meat in a sauce. So uh, even though it's not necessarily what I'd expect, I think it's a really nice touch. And I think that's really all there is, is basically just the, uh, the pork, the potatoes, and the sauce that it's in. So let's give that a taste while it's hot. Yeah, that's really good. I would say that's excellent. This is a really good quality uh, entree. The pork itself is, uh, of course it's pulled pork, so you kind of expect it's pretty tender. And it's nice because it's pulled, you, you don't really, you're not really bothered by the fact that it has that sort of processed kind of uh, appearance to it. And it really doesn't. It, it really seems pretty natural. And then you have the addition of the potatoes, which uh, seem to be perfectly cooked. They're, they're pretty firm, but they're not hard or anything. And then I guess uh, kind of the main thing that really makes this is the sauce, which is sort of like a, it's kind of like a barbecue sauce. It definitely has some sweetness to it. Yeah, maybe a little bit of smokiness too. Not really a, not really any kind of spice. It's not a, a spicy kind of a, a sauce. But of course they cover that by giving you some Tabasco sauce to put in it. We will try that. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I personally think this is perfect as it is. I know a lot of people do like hot sauce, though, so we are going to give it a try with that. I'm just going to put it in this corner, though, so I can enjoy the rest of it without... Of course, I got some on my fingers, too. Let's try out the spicy pulled pork. Yeah, that definitely kicks it up a notch, gives it um, an extra bite for an extra angle, an extra kind of flavor to it. And it's that Tabasco, so it has sort of that, that kind of a vinegary kind of flavor. So in addition to the sweetness and the smokiness, now you have that. Actually, it really does kind of round it up pretty nicely. It's like a completely different dish. It's not bad at all. And while we're here, we might as well do the tortilla thing. Throw one of these chunks on here. I actually kind of like it better without the potatoes, but... Uh, they are in here. Add, add another extra element and some of the sauce. Try that. Yep, that's a very good way to have it. Wouldn't be bad if there was some uh, some cheese sauce to put on this. Basically, just have the Tabasco as uh, an addition. But that's uh, that's quite good. The tortilla. Nothing to write home about. It certainly does taste like flour. It doesn't really have a lot of flavor to it, but it's also definitely fresh and that's really nice. But overall, I think the bottom line is this is an excellent entree. It's very flavorful. It's very tasty. And it really doesn't have a lot of like a prepackaged food kind of a taste. I mean, obviously that's what it is, but to me it actually tastes closer to something you expect from somebody actually making something in a barbecue or possibly like in a slow cooker or something than something you'd find in a can or a pouch. And I think that's probably the ultimate compliment you can give a ration. Uh, I'm not gonna have any problem finishing this thing up. In many ways it kind of brings me back to the very first IMP I ever did a few years ago, the smoked meat and demi-glace sauce. And that was more of a traditional Canadian kind of a dish and it really had that flavor to it. This is definitely closer to what I would consider to be more of like an American barbecue kind of flavor. It really comes through great. But I guess we do have to try some of the other stuff. While the 3-in-1 uh, is still hot. Yeah, I think that tastes really good. Uh, but I do have to add a caveat to that. And the fact that I have to mention that I am not a coffee drinker. So take what you want out of the fact that somebody who doesn't like coffee really enjoys this sweet and creamy Nescafe. It definitely is sweet. I would say the uh, creamer and the sugar kind of overpower the coffee part of it. 
So if you really want a coffee, you'd probably be better off supplying your own black coffee. But it's really tasty. I'm going to try a little peanut butter and jelly tortilla sandwich. And that's good. I didn't try the uh, tortilla and the uh, peanut butter and the jam on their own. But, not surprisingly, they go great together. And the peanut butter itself is very creamy. Still very thirst provoking though. And the raspberry jam. That's really tasty. So a lot of flavor to that. It's pretty sweet. Wash that down with a little of the lemon lime beverage. I think we know what to expect from this. Yeah, it's very tasty. It's not not really overly sweet. And for something that's in a package and comes in a form of a powder, it really doesn't taste all that artificial either. Realizing, of course, that it is artificial. I'll try a few of these M&Ms. I imagine there's too much to report with those. They're M&Ms. But they're fresh M&Ms in this case. Yeah, and that's what you're getting. You get an M&Ms. Nothing to really report as far as anything interesting about these. And that's the best thing I can say about them. They taste just like M&Ms you buy at a store. A lot of times when you are uh, opening a ration that's like five years old or older and you get something like this, it's kind of, you don't know what you're going to get. I just recently did a 2003 MRE that had Skittles and they had melted and basically turned into a Skittles bar. So considering how you don't know what you're going to get in an older one, it really is kind of a treat. And that just leaves us with the date square. This is something I kind of want to say this for last because it's something I've never had before. Look at it, you can, you can definitely see the dates in there. Looks like they're kind of more at the bottom and then is a... It does kind of look like a granola bar, sort of a crust on top. It's quite tasty. It's a different flavor for me. I don't really eat dates a lot, but it's nice because it's it's sweet. It's, it's obviously very fresh, which is always nice. And it does have some sweetness to it, but it's not overly sweet. It's almost like a, uh, a crumb cake kind of a thing. Or like an apple crisp kind of a thing, because this sort of you know, pastry on top is kind of like a crust. And then the, uh, the fruit inside, is, it's kind of dense, and it, it's almost like having a, like a pie. It's really tasty. Well, I can't think of too much to complain about with this one. This was my first ever in-year ration. It was a pulled pork IMP, or individual meal pack, from Canada. Menu number 12 from 2019. Big thank you to Tracy Phillips for sending this along, and as always, thank you for watching. I did leave out the Tic Tacs. I think we kind of know what to expect from them, but give that a try. I think this must be a, it's called Fresh Mint. So kind of like a spearmint kind of a thing. They basically have a little, a little mint rather than gum. Which uh, could go either way. So, uh, gum is always nice for kind of cleaning your teeth if you don't have a toothbrush or anything in the field. But at the same time, I've always liked Tic Tacs. And the real reason I came back was because I also forgot the compressed napkin. And even though I'm kind of tempted to save this because it's such a cool thing, I've never actually had one myself. And so I've never actually shown one of these on the channel. So it's this little tablet. I suppose somebody who doesn't read English or French could be mistaken and open this up and think it was a, a mint of some sort. But basically it's a little compressed napkin in lieu of a moist towelette that you just put in some water. Wow, that's pretty cool. I wasn't sure how much water to use. I just put a little bit in there, but it seems to have done the trick. And then... You have a, a little napkin that's already pre-wetted, as long as you have some water to wet it with, and you make your own your own little wet nap. And it's pretty cool, from that little tablet to this. Thank you again for watching.